arise today to speak to an issue that's of significant importance to our national, provincial, and municipal economies. Uh, we've heard spirited debate here today, and obviously, uh, uh, the, the, our, my member, my, uh, my honourable colleague from Skeena Bulkley, uh, brought a tear to my eye as he waxed on uh, eloquently about a region that uh, I'm very, uh, very familiar with, and uh, my riding is just adjacent. Uh, in these times of economic uncertainty, it's imperative that we recognize the importance of our energy and resource sectors, something that this government uh, seems to have failed. Canada is a country dependent on resource development, and our economy is predicated on the trading of the commodities we produce. The comments made by the Prime Minister about Canadians being known for the resourcefulness rather than the resources is in short ignorant and out of touch with the realities faced by Canadians living in today's uncertain global economy. Canadians who are facing unemployment as a result of the downturn in oil prices. Canadians who are struggling to put food on the table as a result of the skyrocketing cost of living. The comments from our honor, my honourable colleague from Chilliwack Hope today, the emotional colleague uh, uh, comments that from his riding of families that are fearing that they're going to lose their home or how they're going to put food on their plate. Canadians who are affected more and more by the sinking loony. With all of this being said, Madam Speaker, I can't say that I'm surprised that the Liberal Party refuses to put forward a clear position on the Energy East pipeline. They'd rather brainstorm ways to build bigger bureaucracies, add red tape to resource projects until Canada's once reputable investor climate is all but destroyed. In fact, by the sounds of it, our new Prime Minister has taken a page from his father's playbook. I'm sure I don't need to remind the House that the last year, uh, I, I'm sure I don't have a need to remind this House that last year was the worst year for employment losses since the global recession and after the introduction of the National Energy Program, which was coincidentally introduced by former Prime Minister Trudeau. Alberta lost 45,000 jobs in 1982. But the facts are facts, Mr. Speaker and Madam Speaker. The Liberals can only avoid reality for so long. Canada holds the third largest oil reserves in the country, but a lack of energy transport infrastructure means that the eastern part of our country is dependent on foreign crude imports to meet 86% of our daily needs. And surprisingly, they trumpet transit as creating jobs. Hopefully they don't, surely they don't mean that they're going to use high-speed transit to move uh, our, our commodities to Tidewater. Mr. Speaker, this makes no sense. The Canadian oil and gas sector is experiencing increased capacity, and it is crucial that this sector have access to new and diverse markets through the Energy East pipeline. In fact, Energy East is projected to create over 14,000 jobs over the nine year or during the nine year construction phase alone. These are much needed jobs, particularly in Canadian regions hit hard by job losses and economic downturn. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, the creation of the Energy East pipeline would benefit Western producers, Eastern refineries, all levels of government, and everyday Canadians. It would mean more dollars staying in this country. Energy East would bolster our country's trade balance and strengthen Canadian uh, the, the Canadian energy industry, which employs over half a million people and generates more than $20 billion in taxes for all levels of government. Energy East would provide for creation of highly paid, skilled manufacturing jobs and economic opportunities, not just in the West, but across the country. Now, Madam Speaker, this makes sense. Madam Speaker, the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers projected that Canada would lose 100,000 jobs, both directly and indirectly, due to the low price of oil. I have a quote here from Conrad Winkler, President and Chief Executive Officer of Everaz North America, a leading producer of engineered steel products for rail, energy, and industrial end markets. Pipeline projects benefits do not recognize or stop at the field borders. They generate huge benefits for Ontario, Quebec as well, because they provide jobs, property and income taxes, construction activity, and community development. Madam Speaker, the Energy East pipeline won't just have huge benefits for Ontario and Quebec, it will have significant impact on my riding. If you were to take a walk downtown in the streets of Prince George or Quesnel or Williams Lake, you will see Alberta plates, Alberta licenses, families that live in our riding and commute 
to high paying jobs or used to commute to high paying jobs in the oil and gas sector. You can't help but put it or have an acquaintance, friend or loved one who has not been impacted negatively or lost their job due to the downturn in oil prices. It was just this week that WestJet Airlines announced that they would be cancelling direct flights between Calgary, Prince George, Terrace, Brandon, Manitoba, Penticton, Kamloops, Abbotsford, Nanaimo. 88 flights alone in and out of Calgary. That's a huge blow for small communities in my riding. A daily round trip domestic service into an airport in a community roughly the size of Prince George, it generates $2.5 million in value added GDP, $5.8 million in economic output. Madam Speaker, business follows access, follows transportation. This government's arrogance towards the hardworking Canadians employed by oil and natural resource sector is unprecedented. When I and three of my colleagues were at home in my riding last week attending the BC Premier's Natural Resource Forum, the largest of its kind in Canada, it was noticed that not one single member of this Liberal government were in attendance. As a matter of fact, the Minister of Natural Resources declined, had other things to do. That silence was heard. That absence was seen. We heard over nine, from over 900 leading industry professionals, provincial municipal representatives, and indigenous leaders that the confidence that this government talks about, that this newfound confidence, it's not there. I'm not sure who they're talking to. Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister has refused to state support for pipelines in principle, suggesting that it is, isn't his duty to act as a cheerleader for projects. I ask. Isn't this Prime Minister's job to act as a, a cheerleader for Canada and Canadians? You know, instead, instead of going to the communities hardest hit by the downturn in our, in our nation's economy, his first trip after being elected was to Paris to hobnob and to, protect, or to uh, perfect his selfie. He took pictures with movie stars while the, the, the hardworking communities across Canada, those that are less fortunate, worried about their uncertain times. We have a Minister of Trade who's made comments that it wasn't her, her, uh, her job to promote trade. Mr. Speaker, the forecast for 20, or Madam Speaker, the forecast for 2016 is looking exceptionally grim. While the Alberta labour market continues to weaken, the Liberal government remains silent. Employment in the natural resource sector, the manufacturing sector, and the food sector continues to steadily decline. Canadians deserve an action plan that will create jobs, growth, and ensure that they can provide for their families. And the sooner this Liberal government figures out whose job it is to represent Canadians, the sooner we can move towards building an economy that will serve our children's future. So I will once again reiterate to my colleagues across the floor, while you may want us to be known for our resourcefulness, never forget that our nation is, is dependent on the resource development and our economy is predicated on the trade of the commodities we produce. And I stand before you and I'm asking you again, who's going to stand up for Canadians in ridings such as mine? Caribou Prince George. Thank you. Questions and comments, questions and commentaires. L'honorable député de l'Honoré Mercier. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Alors, mon collègue parle de l'importance d'un projet de pipeline, mais malheureusement, pendant qu'il fait ça, son parti fait de ce dossier-là une question d'unité nationale. Est-ce qu'il comprend que ça nuit au projet? Pendant qu'il en parle, lui, son parti met une province contre une autre province. Qu'est-ce qu'il comprend que ça aussi, ça nuit au projet, M. le Président? Et l'attitude actuelle du gouvernement conservateur ne créera pas un seul emploi en Alberta, pas un seul emploi au Québec et pas un seul emploi où que ce soit au Canada. Est-ce que mon collègue comprend ça? The Honourable Member from Caribou, Prince George. Well, I thank my uh, Honourable Member opposite uh, for his... Um a spirited uh, question and, and answer, uh, a fire a volley across the way. I, I want him to rest assured that our government is not looking, or our party is not looking to uh, divide our country. 
uh, our party is looking to make sure, or our group and our opposition is make, looking to make sure that this government's focus is on all of Canada. Not only just the energy projects, but the softwood lumber projects, the projects, the, the resource development that is vital to the communities such as my riding of Caribou Prince George, that to open their eyes and to come into the communities, I've offered now to the Minister of Natural Resource, please come and visit. I'll open the doors for them to please visit my riding, to see what matters most for the friends, the families, for those families that are struggling to find out or figure out how they're going to put food on their plate. You know, Madam Speaker? You're okay. Madam Speaker, my challenge with this government is that they've lost sight. They've gotten overwhelmed with patting themselves on the back and I challenge them to come to our riding in those small communities and to hear firsthand the comments. The uh, questions and comments, the honourable member from Timmins James Bay. I listened with some shock and surprise to my colleague. I come from a resource-based economy. My family worked in the mines. We understand and I never met anybody in Timmins who said, hey, let's build our economy by dumping uh, the dirt into the river systems. They want a clean economy. So when I hear the honourable member want to jerry-rig a review system of the pipelines and then attack the Prime Minister, I've got no love for the present Prime Minister, but he went to Paris. Why was he in Paris? It was to deal with the International Environmental Climate Conference. This is something their Prime Minister refused to do, and it made Canada an outlier because they believe to talk about greenhouse gas, they believe to talk about the environment is somehow anti-jobs. Well, I want to tell the member, it was that attitude for 10 straight years that put them in this pickle now that the rest of the country says no more until we have a credible, coherent, clean and transparent system to prove that it's going to be environmentally safe. They failed and they continue to fail until they start talking about the issue of climate change with any credibility. They are going to remain a marginal party. Before, before, I order, before I continue, I just want to remind the members that out of respect, when, when somebody has the floor that I have already recognized, that person should have the respect of the House. So I would appreciate if the noise could be toned down on this side of the House. Um, you know, when, when that member spoke a while ago, he had that respect, and I would assume that you're going to extend that as well. So uh, um, the Honourable Member from Moose Jaw Lake Centre can respond to uh, the question from uh, the colleague from Timmins James Bay. Oh, sorry, yeah, Caribou Prince George. Sorry. Thank you. That's all right. I called you, uh, Mr. Speaker, a few times, so <laughs> we're even now. So, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate the uh, the comments from my uh, the uh, my honourable colleague uh, over here. Um, it's interesting, actually. I've been waiting for a chance to have this uh, this comment today. Earlier, his uh, his uh, uh, colleague from New West Bur Burnaby talked. To, waxed on about uh, the provincial colleagues in, uh, in, in, in uh, Alberta, about how, how great they're doing, and uh, by, maybe made a little bit of a Freudian slip, but I heard it talked about ground baking um, uh, new policies, and, and I think he's right, because that uh, provincial governments, the NDP provincial governments, uh, scorched earth policies on economic development. We're sure seeing that um, uh, as we move forward. You know, <clears throat> um, you know uh, Madam Speaker, We've had an incredible amount of spirited debate here today, and, and you know, uh, I think the biggest part that I'd like to leave, and I think we've heard it over and over again, this government does not have a plan, with the exception of putting on layers and layers and layers of more red tape that is going to diminish Canada's opportunity to take advantage of economic benefits to get our product to, to, uh, to uh, Tidewaters and to other countries. We need a focused government, and we haven't seen it yet. Thank you.